Welcome to Breadboarding. This is video 34 in the Breadboard 8088 PC series and in this video I'm going to be building MS-DOS 4 from the recently released source code. So if you haven't seen any of the earlier videos then I've been building a basic floppy disk PC on soulless breadboards over the last 33 videos and in the last video we managed to get an early version of PC DOS booting from floppy disk however it wasn't really very functional and there's a few issues now I thought it might be easier to debug this by building MS-DOS 4 since Microsoft released the source code within the last two weeks and allow me to instrument and debug the boot up process. So why are we choosing DOS 4? Well, previous DOS releases didn't really include all the code you needed. So for example, FDisk, Format, Sys, and I think the boot sector source were missing. Now the fact that DOS 4 has been released, it allows the building of the io.sys and ms.sys files, which are the first part of the ms.dos that actually gets loaded once the boot sector has started running code. And this will allow me to add some debug power on self-test messages to get the breadboard PC booting. Now there have been quite a number of blogs and videos on how to do this. There's one particular one, NeoZ, that uh, I've referenced because he's actually done a number of fixes to the files that were released and is available on that GitHub URL. I should also note that there are a number of bug fixes too. Now I won't be merging the bug fixes into the release I'm doing because I want to actually build this as binary compatible with the original 4.0.0 release without any changes for bug fixes. We may choose to do some bug fixes if we come across problems with that. Now it's probably going to be easiest to build this using DOSBox, but I also do have an MS-DOS 3.30 virtual machine, which I'll try and rebuild it once everything's building cleanly. Now I am aware that the original MS-DOS 4.0.0 was buggy and was updated to 4.01. From an earlier build of this I did, it appears to be 4.00 given that is almost binary identical to the 4.0 release, not the 4.0.1. Now there are a number of issues to address. Now various blogs and video articles have addressed these all sorts of different ways and they're all valid ways of doing things. The main issue is that depending on how you get the code, then the GitHub code has line feeds by default, not carriage return line feeds, and the utilities which are provided with the source to actually build this won't work. So the easiest way to address this is if you use git clone on Windows it will automatically convert line feeds to carriage return line feeds with no extra effort and there's all sorts of mechanisms people have shown how to do this but this is by far the easiest and certainly on my default git that I've got installed on Windows it seems to have this auto CR line feed set to true by default and didn't have to change anything. Now one of the problems with the source that's been released, it's great that Microsoft has released the source, however there are a few issues with it. So many uh, characters have been replaced with this rather strange combination, EFBFBD. Now this should be represented as a replacement character if you're looking at it in a tool that actually knows how to do this, or quite often if the replacement character isn't in the font or character set that's being used, you may see the sort of uh, square characters. So each one of those square characters is, I can't show the proper replacement character, so that's what you tend to see. Or if you actually see these byte values, then you'll see them perhaps as those characters if the font or code page doesn't support it. Now the replacement character here, according to this link here, which I'll include in the description below, is used to replace an incoming character whose value is unknown or unrepresented in Unicode. And this is really where the whole problem is, is that what we're dealing with here is the very, very early DOS world meeting the modern Unicode world. And if you don't make allowances for it, then it will make a mess of things. So what appears to have happened is the MS-DOS code page 437 line draw characters have been corrupted by some UTF-8 editor before the release. Now NeoZ has corrected a number of these and certainly replaced the byte sequence there with a, an appropriate line draw character. There's also a few other issues. So for example, the dev folder was missing from the make file and it won't build properly without the lib path being modified to add the BLD in there. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to check out the source code from GitHub and making minimal changes to get it to build to be as close to the original binary 4.0.0 release and then as we go through and looking at configuring this to work with the breadboard PC, we may then extend it and fix bugs and do various things like that. Now, what I thought I'd first do is just to highlight the code page hell. Those of us who are more than a certain age will be aware of DLL hell and also code page hell. Now, the original PC, when it was released, only had one character set or code page. 
and this is one of the pages out of the original IBM 5150 technical guide and this includes the top 128 characters. Now you can see here that IBM when they released this they chose a number of accented and foreign characters as the Brits and Americans amongst us would call them and also included a number of line draw characters and box draw characters and a lot of the text files that are in the MS-DOS 4 release actually make use of some of these line draw characters. Now later international versions of MS-DOS in particular the MS-DOS 5 reference includes these ones here. So this is the original 5150 page that I've referenced and if you look at the MS-DOS 5 manual here you can see that this is the default code page, so 437 English as it became known. And then we've also got multilingual Latin 1. Now these code pages still have a lot of line draw characters. So in fact, even if you were switching to these other DOS code pages, a lot of these line draw things would work. We've also then got the Latin 2 for the Slavic Eastern European languages. Portugal has its own code page. Canadian French also has one as well, and I think also Nordic countries do as well. So what these will vary by is all certain symbols and things here which are needed by these languages. And so if you were to actually look at a file using some of these particular symbols here, you may find that when you switch between the code page, the representation will change. But it would appear that the line draw characters would actually be preserved between these various versions. So then Windows introduced the ANSI or code page 1252, which I think is closer to the Latin one without the line draw characters. And then Unicode in UTF-8 came along and simplified things. However, there is a big but with that. So this is some of the example characters I've taken out of some of the files here. So at the top here, we've got some of the characters. I think it's from one of the select ASM source files. So this, this select utility was used to install DOS. And what you can see here is the representation on how this is supposed to look. And if you use the original code page 437, CP 437, or in Notepad++, it's actually as OEM US is the encoding. And you'll actually see these line draw characters and you'll see something looking like this. I have modified this slightly. But then if we then view that same file under Windows, ANSI or code page 1252 and a lot of other uh, versions, you'll see that you'll see these accented characters. And this is because where in place there is a horizontal line character, then the capital A with the double umlaut thing on the top of it replaces it. What appears to have happened with a lot of the source code here is that it's gone through some UTF-8 editor, probably something like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. And in fact, what this shows here is I opened this file up here in VS Code, and you can see that VS Code then substituted all of the line draw characters for these replacement characters. So in fact, the EF, BF, BD, is in fact this replacement character, but some editors and fonts don't actually represent that character properly, and so it will quite often appear as one of these boxes here. This hopefully just tries to explain what's going on. What I will just show you is these files in, in Notepad++. Okay, so this is the first file in Notepad++, and the key thing here, if you're using Notepad++, you'll see that quite often by default it will default to ANSI encoding or UTF-8. Now the first 128 characters of ANSI and UTF-8 are pretty much the same as they will be for all these other character sets. Now the one we're actually interested in is the OEM US. You can see that if I change this to 1252 it would then change it. It doesn't actually change the file, it just changes how the file is interpreted when being presented to the screen. So this is what it should be. Now, if you edit things using that encoding, then everything should be fine. When you then look at those same things using the ANSI encoding, that's when you hear, see that. And then this file here is the outcome of what happened by opening the original file in VS Code and saving it. And this is what happened. And if you look at the hex there, you can see you've got these EF, BF, BD all over the place. And, and this is what the individual characters look like. So I hope this um, makes a little bit of an explanation of what's going on here. It should be relatively straightforward for somebody to fix this. Unfortunately, the files that have been released so far are, have effectively been corrupted and they've lost the line draw characters. So really, this would need to be done from the source floppy disks, hopefully by somebody. OK, so let's check out the source code and try and build DOS 4. So Microsoft have already released the source code for earlier versions of DOS, so DOS 1, DOS 2, 
and as I said earlier that those weren't all complete and some of them were actually a mixture of various releases and uh, on the OS2 Museum there's a really good article which I include in the description below showing how they have forensically sorted out what on earth was going on with the, um, the DOS2 release. So the key thing really here is that within the DOS4 area We've now actually got all the files being divided down into a number of different chunks. So with the BIOS, the various operating system commands, the boot code which we're interested in for the BIOS will be the io.sys, this will be ms.sys, these are all the commands and command.com I think. The device things here is actually excluded from the build file, so the make file, so we do need to add that in. And the select utility is where a lot of the changes need to be. And this was like the basic installer that was included in uh, this version of DOS. I don't, don't think many people use it. And then the tools is actually where the various executables are for actually building this. So everything you need is actually in here. The only issue is that some of the paths aren't quite right to reference this lib folder. So this lib folder path isn't correct in some of the, the build tools and things. Now the easiest way how to check this out, although it's tempting to download the zip file. If you download the zip file you won't get any of your line feeds converted to carriage return line feeds. So by far the, the easiest way to do this is just to copy the git URL from there and then we're going to go into DOSBox and then we're going to first of all check it out and then we'll need to make some changes to correct some of these problems. Okay so now we're going to download the source code so I just need a command prompt and I've already created an MS-DOS folder and under build 4.0 I've already got the NeoZ sources downloaded and we're going to be using uh, the MS folder here. So all we need to do now is do git clone and the URL that we copied a little earlier and this won't take very long to, to download. Once you've downloaded this, what I'm going to do is just have a check of some of the source files just to make sure that they're using carriage return line feeds and not line feeds. All done. Okay, so let's just have a check on one of the source files. So if you just look at one of these first folders here, and if we open with Notepad++, and if we just show end of line, can see we've got carriage turn line feed. So the first step in a lot of the other videos in converting all these files has been avoided. So that makes things a lot simpler. Okay, so let's compare the source code between the version we've downloaded and NeoZed's version. So we're only showing the different items. We're not showing the left and right unique items here. And we're also turned off tree mode so we can see everything here. Now, one of the things you will notice about the NeoZed files is that they are all lowercase. I think this was done on Windows Subsystem for Linux and he converted the carriage return line feeds by a zip option. So that's the only issue really here in that the file names have changed case. Some of these changes in here are fairly minor. There are only about three or four files that actually had to be changed because their lines were too long to assemble cleanly. However, what I will be doing is just going through these and making correction to the line draw characters because NeoZ has actually uh, corrected a lot of those issues. There are a few areas where there are bug fixes he's actually put into the code as well. So I won't be migrating the bug fixes over because I want to try and build this to be as close to the original binaries as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that and I'll speed it up because and commentate over it because it's going to take probably about five or ten minutes to go through merging some of these changes in. So colors is just a line draw. There's a bug there we're not going to do. More line draw. A few bugs we're skipping over more line draw, more bugs, more line draw. Now that's the bug that we're going to have to fix the stacks to do with the booting. And then we're getting into the select utility, which is mainly line draw characters. So there's a lot of these that we just need to migrate across. So a few things here that I will comment over in real time. So I'm going to leave the D drive here because the way how I've mounted the folders here on DOSBox makes it easier. So I'm going to leave that. But this change here, you can see that the BLD folder needs to be added in here. So we're going to move that into here. 
and the BLD also needs to be included in the include file there as well. And we're also then going to add the path to the to the set as well because otherwise it breaks the DOS environment. So the only thing I haven't changed there really is the drive and I think this is just in increasing the DOS version and I'm pretty sure this source is 4.00 so I don't want to include that. This is a bug fix so I'm not going to include that. And then a lot of these changes are the line draw so I'm just going to accept all of those changes. And then I'm not going to make a change. I don't believe this source is 4.01. I suspect the bug fixes that have been introduced probably make it pretty much 4.01, uh, but I'm going to leave it at 4.0 for the moment, and I can always apply those fixes at a later point in time. So that should be all the changes that we actually need. Okay, so I just need to make one or two other changes. So I'm going to put the minus L in for MASM so that will generate listing files for all of the assembly so that will help to work out what's going on during the boot process and if we have a look at the run me so we need to run the setenv.bat and we can either use nmake minus i or nmake minus i minus x and then a file name so I think we might do that because then we'll get a log of everything that's going on and then we use copy to copy it to the bin folder now I have got a slightly different version of copy in that I've got it to log the output so that if there's any missing then we can see what's going on. So we just now need to go to DOSBox. Now I just need to mount the D drive as the directory above source. So that's C slash MS DOS slash build four zero MS slash MS DOS the four dot zero. So there we go, we have the source directory. So at the moment you can see here that we've got 3000 cycles is the speed of our DOS box now equates to about uh, 20 megahertz 286 now and I happen to know that will take over an hour for this to run so we're just going to crank this up using control F12 so it will complain a little bit if I need it more than 20,000 but We'll bump it up to about 200,000, so that should actually run quite a bit faster. Now I'll just switch over to run DOSBox in full screen. So now we just need to go into source. We're going to set the environment variables. So now we just need to do nmake minus i minus x dos log if there's any errors then it will log those and then we can fix them and run nmake again and eventually we should end up with the working binaries. So the majority of the code is actually assembly which uses MASM. There is a little bit of C code in there as well. The majority of time is actually spent building all the individual commands in the CMD folder and then there's also select which is the installer in the select and the extended memory manager in MEM. So it probably takes up more than an hour if you run this on an older PC. Okay, you can see there that it's actually failed here on the making the extended memory manager. So I do know from running this previously, all I need to do cut to the root folder. Okay, so the environment variable is not set up. We do then make minus i minus x dos four. Okay, so that should have completed. So all I'm going to do now is to copy over my other copy2.bat file. Okay, so I've copied the copy2.bat. All this does is it's the same as copy.bat, it just has the ability to log the output so it doesn't disappear off the screen. So just give it the path where to put the bin and then where to actually redirect the output to. 
Yeah, so we just need the bin folder there. So we need to do copy to slash bin, and we just want the copy to dot log. Okay, so that should have copied all the files there. If we go back to the main screen share, so if you look at copy to dot log, hopefully. Yes, we've got all the files being copied. There aren't any missing. So when it was disappearing off the screen, it was just difficult to see whether or not we'd got everything there. So everything looks like it's built properly. There was just that small problem with EMM XE because of the miner's eye switch it didn't like for some reason. OK, so now we've built these. What we've got is we've checked that the all of the necessary files have been copied over here. So we've now got our new folder here with all the binary files for DOS 4. And what I have got is another folder where I've downloaded the images for DOS 4.0.0 and DOS 4.0.1. So if we now do a win merge between this folder and then we will go to the 4.0 folder first. So if we look at MS-DOS 4.0.0 and do a compare. Hopefully this will do a binary comparison. And what we can see here, it's doing a binary comparison here. The dates and things obviously are different, but what we can see is virtually everything down here is the same. If we also just make sure we're showing the left and the right unique names as well. It's the only things really that we have different. So we've got autoexec.bat, which exists because it's a bootable floppy that we've copy this on. So backup.com doesn't appear to exist on the disks originally. We've got config.sys. Then there are some things to do with the shell, which I think we won't have. We've only got the EGA CPI on this release and GW basic and hymem.sys. So we don't seem to have hymem.sys source here. I do remember seeing a comment somewhere else that um, someone has got copies of that source code and the LCD CPI we only seem to have on our build and link only it seems to be provided with the other one. So it looks like the vast majority of all of the things that we've actually generated are, do actually exist. So it looks like this is pretty close to the original 4.00 release. And if we just repeat this with the 401 folder, so you can see here that we've actually got a few more differences. So command.com, fast open, fdisk format. So where we had files, then there weren't generally any differences, but as this, we, we can definitely see that we've got differences in MS-DOS sys going to those. There's not huge numbers, but there are quite a few differences there. So we can be pretty much certain that this is the original 4.00 source code. And obviously, uh, if we were to apply some of those bug fixes and things that I was showing earlier, then it may be that these this would actually become a, a lot closer to the... 401 release but for the moment that's what I was looking to try and do here and I'm just going to have a quick look at the the BIOS on the boot information and obviously we, what we can see here is we've got msboot.list here so this hopefully will give us uh, a fairly decent amount of documentation on the bootloader and also if we look at the BIOS as well that should be io.sys I think it's maybe a little more tricky to work out which things you want. So we've got io.sys has been created there, but there should also be the text files created, listing files created here as well. So you should be able to go through those listing files, for example, and look at the various bits of code here. And hopefully with that should make a bit more sense with all of the uh, header files and everything else included in there. So that will give me something to, to work on. So basically being able to, to build this, 
The only thing you need to do now is to build some form of boot disk to actually test that out. So this msboot.bin is likely to be the boot sector that we need. And if we just have a look at that in the hex viewer, we put this in hex mode, we can see that although it's a 32K file, when we get down the bottom, we can see hopefully that 7C00, that address that we were familiar with from the previous video. So 7C00 is where the boot sector gets loaded into RAM. And so what we need to do is then to take these last 512 bytes here and put those in the boot sector of a floppy disk. Okay, to make a bootable floppy to actually test this out, the first thing you need to do is to get the boot sector. Now, I've already done this one. I've already edited this. But when we looked at this previously, this was a 32K file and it had a 7C00. This was the boot sector. So all I've done is I've removed everything up to 7C00 and saved it. And Notepad++ when in hex mode will do that quite nicely. And if we come out of that, we should be able to then see that uh, this is now a file with 512 bytes in size there. So that is the right size. Now I'm using an application called WinImage. Now WinImage is, this is the pro version that I've actually registered, which is about, uh, I think $60 or something like that. And the advantage of this is that it actually has the ability to write the boot sector. So all I'm going to do here is to create a new image I'm going to make it a 1.44 meg floppy disk. What I can now do is to change the boot sector properties. Now by default it's actually created this here. What I'm going to do is to open my boot MS boot file that I've got. So this is my boot sector and it's actually picked up the MS DOS for MS DOS 4.0 and the serial number. So if I click OK on that, I now just save this. I want to put this in the same folder just above here. So I'll just call this MS-DOS 0. How many characters is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. And I'm just gonna call that .ima for image. Okay, so now we have a, a blank boot disk actually here. And in fact, on the website for one of the things I referenced, so this is virtually fun. So uh, NeoZed actually includes the examples of how to do this. So in fact, what we want to do is image mount our image minus T minus floppy, then in fact, we've already got the boot sector here. He's already used a 622 boot sector, but I wanted to use the boot sector we created actually in this uh, in this build process. And then we just need to copy io.sys, ms.sys and command.com. Now io.sys needs to be first, then ms.dos, and then it doesn't really matter so much, I don't think, with command.com. So just gonna fire up DOSBox again. And we just need to mount the D drive again. Okay, and we've got our image there as well now. So now we need to mount the image. So IMG mount a MS DOS 400.ima minus T floppy. Okay, so now we can go to A, colon, so there's nothing there at the moment, and then we just need to copy, copy io.sys, msdos.sys, and command.com. Okay, so now have those now. We might need to set the attributes on those as well, really, to uh, ideally to uh, to make it a proper boot disk, but let's just see whether or not that will work. So now if we go back to our D drive, and now we do boot 
Mine's L. There you go. Okay, so we seem to have MS DOS version four. It'll be very basic. There's no there's no other command or anything there, but we do now actually have a a bootable version. So if I now come out of that and go back to the image and see whether or not that image has been updated. I guess I've added all the other files from the bin folder to the MS-DOS 400 image there. So I'm just going to test that out on the DOS box. Okay, so I'm just going to make that full screen. Just going to check the version info. So this is DOSBox 0.74 and reporting DOS version 5. So now just going to mount the floppy disk. Then we're just going to boot. And if we just do version MS-DOS 4 and do dr slash w. So there we have it. We have our MS-DOS 4.00 there. I have tried this on a physical floppy disk and tried to boot it on a legacy mode BIOS PC, but due to the stack space bug, which we're going to fix in the next video, then that won't boot on the relatively modern hardware. So up to over 30 minutes now, so I'm going to break the video at this point. So we've built out the MS-DOS 4.00 from source. I did try to write this to a floppy disk and boot it on a physical PC, but as some of the previous bloggers have said that the 4.00 release had some problems with stack space. So there is a bug fix I know in some of the changes to apply that will actually resolve that. So in the next video, I'm going to build the MS-DOS 4.01 from source. And then once we've got that working, I'm going to try and build it actually on the previous version of MS-DOS, MS-DOS 3.3, which will be like it would be built in the day. So if you want to see the rest of the Breadboard PC series, there is a playlist which will go all the way through the whole series. And if you don't want to miss out on future videos, please hit subscribe. And if you could hit like as well, it just helps to make the videos available to a wider number of people. Thanks for watching.